Welcome back. I'm excited to bring our next guest on. As always, we always talk about technology around here and how to use your best practices when you're talking about using them. Obviously, LinkedIn is a powerhouse. I know a lot of people out there still in 2020 think LinkedIn is a resume platform. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not a place to store your resume, just like you shouldn't be using monster.com. Who the hell looks for a job there? Anyways, we have Jeremy Leonard joining us today, and Jeremy is gonna give us some tips and tricks that we should all be using to increase the power of our LinkedIn. Obviously, we've had some amazing guests on here before to talk about LinkedIn, so we'll name drop him, of course, the amazing Rich Cardona. He's been on, and it does amazing content on LinkedIn, so we're gonna bring Jeremy on, and he's gonna talk about it. But before we get Jeremy here, just a little background on Jeremy. Jeremy is a LinkedIn organic growth strategist, and he's the host of a new podcast called Your Network. So we're gonna drop that link to that show inside of this when we're done, but I just wanna let you know that. So what Jeremy basically does is he works with individuals on building out their LinkedIn profiles. So it just, be, and he's an ever flowing resource for folks to learn how to use LinkedIn. Gives you the simple tips and tricks you may not think to increase your LinkedIn. So without further ado, let's bring to the show our next guest, our good buddy, Jeremy. Boom, Jeremy, welcome. How are you, bud? Man, I'm doing fantastic. You know, I'm, um, I'm very thankful I woke up this morning healthy and loved, so doing fantastic. And that might be the best personalized shout out I think I've ever gotten about my LinkedIn skills. So I'm super excited to be here, man. Well, you know, LinkedIn, I've always been a big time fan of using LinkedIn. I've also become frustrated using it at times because you see people get engagement and, you know, the ones that I've always seen get engagement, besides the ones that try to take their clothes off and get engagement, I see some random ones that get engagement and it's always driven me nuts because everybody thinks the content they put out is so good and then you get it on there and you're like, I've got over 13,000 connections, everybody should be liking my post. And you get like sure. two and you're like, dude. And then you go complain to people about LinkedIn and they're like, dude, who uses LinkedIn? That's like totally where I put my resume. Like, I don't need a job. Why should I use it? If I hear one more person talk about LinkedIn just being a place for resumes, I'm going to lose my mind. I really am. Because I want everyone to understand that LinkedIn is like, I want you to imagine the world's largest networking event that is going on 24-7, 365, doesn't stop. And it's right in front of your face, but you're using it as like a monster.com. Like it's it's not at all the platform. It switched to a content creation platform around two, two and a half years ago. Do you ever wonder? I know we both are mutual fans of the same show that we both been watching. Well, I watched it long before the quarantine. Just noticed how much I watched it during the quarantine. Uh, the Office. And could you imagine if we got to see them use LinkedIn in the Office? Could you just imagine Michael Gary Scott using? It's wrong. I know his middle name. Do no, I. Wrong? <laughs> that, that means you're a big fan. And you can tell I actually have a threat level midnight poster in the background right now. So I'm a huge fan of The Office. But no, I can't because I know that at one point Creed tried. Creed actually tried um, to start tweeting things out, right? And Ryan created a special folder in yeah. his Word document that he was just typing some things out. So the Great thought thoughts. process of having Michael Scott allowed to post whatever he wants probably, probably would have been fired a lot a long time ago for sure oh yeah i always think of like linkedin that way but you know linkedin's interesting and i know the great gary vanderchuk is a big advocate of it he's always telling people to use it and yep. and we've always used it so i mean as we jump into this I, I know you're frustrated when you hear it and i hear it a lot too and i'm like stop saying that but people think it's a resume thing that i, I know that drives mm -hmm. you nuts it's clearly not. Yes, you could get a job. It's probably one of the, I think it's the best place to look for a job and apply for a job right. is on the LinkedIn platform. So I think we'll kick off with that with over, what are we at? 30 million plus unemployed folks right now. LinkedIn is a powerhouse yep. platform for you. If you're watching, you want to grab a note paper and a pen and pay attention. And then afterwards, contact Jeremy because he's just going to help you directly. These tips and tricks will get you, it'll just put your foot in the door, but that's about all that we're going to be sure. able to do. LinkedIn is it's a deep dive. It's like using YouTube. It's both products are powerful if you use them properly. Would you say that's accurate? Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, no, it hundred percent is. And I think where I'd like to start with this part of the conversation is really just talk about the fact that LinkedIn is still being viewed this way as a resume perspective because who people are connected with. People are actually using this as an opportunity to grow their networks out, not just look at the same 5, 10, 20 people they've been connected with forever. So if you're doing anything right now I and if you don't really understand LinkedIn, I would start by connecting with new people, start networking, start having conversations. 
Now, as far as what I would really make a recommendation about from a content perspective is, yes, it is super frustrating to get one to two likes on your content. You could have the best piece of content on the planet, but it doesn't matter if you're not engaging with other people. So long story short, every single person and every single post has a different score from an algorithm perspective, right? Your score is determined based off a lot of different variables, but ultimately it comes down to how often you're using the platform, how often you're engaging with other people on the platform, um, ultimately how much you're giving to the platform, right? So if you're not actively participating in other people's content and other people's conversations, then at the end of the day, you're just wasting your time because if you're not giving to the platform, the platform is not going to give back to you. So as far as like if we're talking about job seekers, man, what I would be recommending, and I was a recruiter for a couple of years too, it was my last opportunity. And what I was recommending people do then is documenting what you've actually learned and then sharing it on LinkedIn and also document what you're learning. So if I was a job seeker right now, I would be one connecting with companies. I'd be like targeting five companies on LinkedIn that I would really want to connect with, and I would want that I want to work for. And from there, I would be connecting with people at that company on LinkedIn and start to become part of their feed by engaging with their content and also direct networking with them by having like um, informational interviews, right? My good friend Jess Smith talks about this, about this all the time is actually connecting with these people and not just immediately saying, hey, I need you to hire me, I'm desperate, which a lot of America is, right? And a lot of people around the world, but at the end of the day, you need to be creating value by having conversations and creating relationships before you can come in and ask. So I think in a nutshell, I hope that answered part of your question, but it's really a place to where you need to be putting content out on and then also to be engaging with other people on the platform. You can't expect to get likes if you're not liking and commenting on other people's posts. So that, that's great. Hold on. I'm going to do something cool here. Do no, nope, that's not you. That's me. There we go. So one of the big things that I have seen on LinkedIn recently is folks putting more video up. Rich Cardona talks about it quite often. So it's Gary Vee. You got to put more video. Video actually has more reach than throwing a graphic or something. You know, there's a million different pieces of content, right? Gary talks about like 64 pieces of content a day or something crazy like that. And I see people doing video all the time. I've seen more video now than ever. What's your thoughts on, on video? And, and if you're just getting new to it, how, I mean, where do you start with putting video up? And this theory of links, we've seen links leave links in the post, put links down sure. in the comments. There's a little bit everywhere. So, I mean, how do we, I mean, what is the, what's the backdrop on this? So I would actually argue from a visibility standpoint that video actually has less of a reach as opposed to written text and like text content. And that's just historically speaking based on what myself and my clients and other people I work with have done. So if I go out and I put a 1300 character post out on LinkedIn, I do it appropriately, optimize times and things like that, which is a whole other conversation, I will actually get way more views on that written text than video. The reason video is so important is because it's way more, it's it converts a lot heavier, not necessarily in views, but in actual engagement and likes and comments as opposed to how many views. So typically on social media, you're looking at a one to three percent conversion rate based on how many followers you have. If you're getting one to three percent, that's a great number um, if you're using the platform right. But with video, you're actually going to have less overall viewership than something that's written text, but you're going to have a lot higher conversion rate because people are seeing you. People are able to relate to you a lot better um, so as far as like getting started with video uh, you know it took me a long time to get on video and the end of the end of the day you know this better than anyone it's just doing it it's just showing up and being brave and understanding that you're good enough to be on video and just because it's a professional platform does not mean that you only had to professional like post professional content this is a place to where you can talk about your story your why yes talk about your experiences and expertise but at the end of the day just go buy yourself a nice logitech camera or do it on your iphone and just post it and as long as you're part of the conversation linkedin will love you for it that, that's sound advice i love that you said that because so many people fail when it comes to that that they're just like scared to jump in front of a camera or just put themselves out there or people treat it like it's facebook <laughs> there's right. there, there's not a happy medium i swear every time i'm on linkedin i'm just like oh my goodness why are you posting stuff that belongs on and of course there's always those folks that will say that on on linkedin this isn't facebook i always love that 
just to make sure I know what platform and, I'm on. <laughs> and honestly, man, this is the beautiful part about LinkedIn too, right? So your overall followership is a conference is a, it's it's a accumulation of your connections and your followers, right? So they're separated too. But you know, on Facebook, if you you can just click on follow, right? Same thing on LinkedIn. If you don't like that person's content, but maybe they work at your company and you don't want to offend them, you can just unfollow them and you can create the narrative of your newsfeed. And I think that's a, that's a big problem people have is that they're not seeing the type of content that I see every day because they haven't spent the time to actually manage their newsfeed. So I highly recommend it as a strategy I do is to kind of help people filter out their newsfeed into things that are more, you know, that are more aligned with their goals. Maybe it's more aligned with their B2B um, selling strategy so that way they're seeing those people more in their feed, their potential clients and customers, as opposed to Joe Schmo making a funny video talking about how bad work sucks. You know what I mean? Okay. I think there's a big strategy there too. So let me ask you this, and it's something that I see on LinkedIn almost every day is, and, and let's just do this, because part of the show is we always like to give away some tips and tricks to the sure. folks at home. I think one of the biggest offenders is your profile picture and what you put right there for the whole world to see. That's one mm -hmm. of my big, because you know, you're if you're surfing LinkedIn and just looking, I always laugh at some of the things that you post. I once did, this is a few years ago, I looked up how many people had the term social selling in their, right? Everybody was a social selling expert a few years ago. This is like five yeah. years ago. Everybody was. I think it was like 1.2 million people were rocking <laughs> that somewhere in their profile. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of experts there. Yeah. So what are your, like, give us your top three Number one, start with the profile picture. I, I see mm. so many offenders, sunglasses on. You could tell they edited out the X or whoever they have their arm around, or they're yeah, not big, even. Uh, yeah. So, what, what yeah, a really tips popular one is people cropping out their wedding photo, which drives me nuts. I was actually featured in an article by my buddy Mike Podesto and um, FindMyProfession.com, and my entire thing was just the profile picture. It's not overly complicated. You can just have a blank wall if you're, or you can have something about your personality, which is fine. But if you're rocking sunglasses and you got a cheesy smile, or like you're throwing up deuces or something, we got to have a conversation here. Like. In mine, like maybe I look a little mysterious, but that's a whole other conversation. I was going for that blue steel look. But at the end of the day, just make it simple. Just blur out the background, have a smile, you know, keep it very short and sweet. If you're cropping out things or if you see an arm in the photo or if, I swear to you, I saw a man one time who put his driver's license up. This is someone who was applying to a job. And because it and recruiters, for the record, are way more likely to connect with you if you have a profile picture. Our Boolean searches, our search and the way that we do extensive searches and stuff, um, especially on LinkedIn RPS, it's naturally gonna show up higher if you have a profile picture. So you have to have one. Just don't overthink it, but at the same time, just make sure this is a professional site too. That's and then as far as like <laughs> tips for what was the other what was the other question? Oh, uh, the other one was what should people put in that actual line that's right there where you have your picture and then it says Eric Mitchell and you could have all these things that I've seen emojis, I'm seeing expert. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a fancy title and then there's this new thing with emojis. Emojis actually draw me nuts. To me, emojis look unprofessional. I don't know if I'm showing my mm -hmm. age. But when I'm looking at you as a professional and taking you serious, I'm like the professionals I look at. I look at guys like Guy Kawasaki. They don't have emojis in their profile. I know I'm comparing a, a, a freaking marketing god, but sure, sure. I mean, guy is guy. To me, if you're going to mimic somebody, I'm going to mimic V or I'm going to mimic Gary or somebody like that that is a thought leader, a true thought leader that didn't mm -hmm. strive to become one. I mean, what are your tips like? What is is it shorter is better? thoughts on emojis. If you need emojis, how many should you be using? I just see a lot of people going emoji crazy thinking it's yeah. Instagram. There's a lot of different schools of thought on this one, and I, I can explain the emoji one real quick. So uh, emojis haven't always been on LinkedIn, right? This is a platform that I've been on for the past three years creating content. I've seen it evolve. Now, whenever that option actually became available to put emojis in your title, a lot of in, quote unquote influencers are putting it up there to kind of test along the lines of like, okay, does that help out with search engine optimization? Am I going to show up higher in the rankings because of this new feature I'm added? But if you'll see a lot of them actually took it off too. So uh, I don't recommend emojis because I feel like it's a waste of space. 
as far as your headliner is concerned, this is this is also keyword heavy. So if your mission is to find a job, this is left to right keyword heavy. So make sure that you're putting in something about what you're doing um, or about what your goal is to do, what type of company you want to work for. So like mine's very simple. It's your new network um, host, right? Because I host a podcast. It's the first thing I want people to see. Podcast is in the first initial line of mine because I want to show up higher for people that are searching podcasts. If you're um, you know, a .NET developer in Nashville, Tennessee, I would highly recommend putting software developer earlier. But if you're more of a consultative type of coach or something, what I've seen very effectively done is saying along the lines of, I help people with X, Y, Z. Just keeping it very simple from a consultative perspective that saying something along the line of, I help people with organic growth on social media would be an example of that. Like but that. yeah, emojis, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a big emoji guy either. It felt weird even sell, telling you that I was here in the Skype chat with a thumbs up. I don't know. I'm not a big emoji guy. I, I'm here with you. Emojis yeah. are interesting. Like, I like GIFs. I, I imagine like Michael Scott would be a pretty big emoji guy. Oh, he, we know he would. That and GIFs he, and <laughs> memes. He would love all of those because we, we already know he loves sharing. He was the email chain guy. He was good at those. So He was the email chain guy. That's right. That's right. And bad uh, Chris Rock segments. He liked doing Chris Rock segments. I'm aging myself. I, I've totally watched way too much of The Office. I could quote that way too much. No, 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 no. It's my favorite show. It's we, great. We'll have to do a trivia trivia off sometime or we something. We totally should. We should have it on the show, just trivia. Who knows The Office the best? I think you, anybody should do that. Perfect, perfect. Well, Jordan be the uh, judge, and she can we buzz in. She <laughs> can she, say I, right. She likes The Office. Yeah, she can be the judge. That's totally fine. I don't think I associate um, with anybody who doesn't like The Office. If you don't like The Office, there's something basically wrong with you. Uh, we've watched it, but our argument, so here, completely away from LinkedIn. Sorry, everyone who's like taking notes. Uh, to jump to LinkedIn real fast, off to LinkedIn and back to The Office, because I love The Office. Uh, mm. Would you agree or disagree that the show kind of went downhill after Michael Scott left the show? I 100% agree. Um, it... It just didn't feel – it didn't have the Office vibe, which if, whenever you rewatch the show, if you're a true fan, you've watched this 8, 9, 10, 50, 75 times over, right? And if you rewatch it, the first season is really hard to watch, but it sets up the entire rest of the show with the highest level of impact, which I love so much. But whenever Michael leaves – and Will Ferrell comes in for a minute, and then Andy kind of takes over. It just goes downhill for me, man. And, my, and everyone that I know pretty much agrees. It's not that it was bad. It's not that I didn't still love the characters and the character development. But Michael is Michael Scott. I mean, he he was the show. It's the reason that Space Force. This have you seen Space Force yet? I have. I like it. It's getting yeah. horrible reviews, but I think he's hilarious. Uh, it's getting horrible reviews. Yeah, people are like trashing it. I'm like, because everybody. They see, and this is the problem we have. <laughs> too many people have too, too many people have opinions. First off, they should, not everyone should be allowed to have a Twitter. Too no. many people have opinions. But anyway, yeah, we already I already covered that. On a complete side note, already covered <laughs> that topic earlier on Twitter today. Going, yeah, some people should have lost their privileges to Twitter a long time ago. <laughs> but you're uh -oh. right. Uh, you know, it's interesting reading about people bashing on Space Force, and I and I know what the problem is, and I told my wife this. I said, you know, the biggest problem is everybody hears it and sees it as from the creators of The Office and Steve Carell. So mm. what you're expecting is Jim and Dwight and the whole cast. I guess to me, I compared it to this. It's weird seeing Steve Carell in a different role, just like it's mm. weird seeing, you know, John Krasinski not playing Jim and being James Ryan in, yeah. you know, the the Jack Ryan series on Amazon. Two different people, but the best parody was done when season one is when somebody put <laughs> him in the office with Dwight and turned the TV show into that. It was hilarious. I watched it and was laughing because you watched that. So I think that's where people struggle is you always kind of look at Steve Carell as that, but Steve mm -hmm. Carell is a very talented actor in my very eyes. Very talented actor. I mean, you sure. look at the, that Apple series that he did with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. He's mm -hmm. fabulous in that. Uh, really took him out of his comedy side and showed his am amazing ability to be a dramatic actor. But, I mean, you got to think about it. On The Office alone, if you look at the talent, his own wife was on the show, which is yeah. great, and they played such a funny part uh, to each other. But when you see him, especially when he was on Krasinski's YouTube channel during the quarantine, it was hilarious mm -hmm. to see that Steve doesn't know how to use technology very well, and thank <laughs> goodness his wife does. We, we yeah, I that. still haven't watched that YouTube clip. I need to go watch that. Um, I've heard great things, but it's like a good reunion. Um, but yeah, ultimately, yeah, Andy, Andy was okay, but especially whenever there's so many different things with this show. Whenever it ended, like who didn't get together? Uh, I mean, the fact that Aaron and uh, 
Aaron and Andy didn't get together kind of was weird too. But I don't know. Great, great, fantastic show. I don't know how we got here from LinkedIn, but uh, uh, I think I we talk about so offices and we go there. I mean, I you know I I've already uh-huh. had the office conversation today, office space conversation. I think everything depends on around a certain things in my world that I really love. I love Office Space, the movie, and Office, yeah. the TV show. So they're like. They go together. But before you go, let's uh, do my favorite thing I like to do when we talk to LinkedIn experts is give your Mm. top five do's and don'ts. You could have three do's and two don'ts or three don'ts and a couple do's. But give us your top, it could be three, I don't care. Uh, But whatever you're comfortable giving us. But give us your top tips and tricks. Let's go positive here. Top Okay. Tips. I was about to go. I was about to go pretty negative too. Well, don't, um, don't go negative. Let's go positive. <laughs> I want people. I mean, number one, I get it a lot from people. Oh, you like LinkedIn? I'm like, yeah, because somebody asked me. Because you'll see in the lower thirds, whenever I do a show, it shows LinkedIn, and people like I, I get messages, and they're like, Eric, why do you put that on there? No, and I guess everybody's yeah. also a surfer when I do it too. By the way, they all have that kind of like ditch red. That's how I yeah. think people who don't use LinkedIn yeah. are. Uh, but they're like, Eric, why do you put that up there? Like. I get Instagram and Twitter, but why LinkedIn? And I'm like, yeah, because LinkedIn has the highest organic growth of that in, out of any social media platform other than TikTok. And guess what? Most of those kids on TikTok don't have buying authority. It's more brand reputation why people are on there, right? Yeah. So absolutely. if you want to actually make business and make and make money, you're on the largest platform that has organic growth for B2B and B2C. Period. Okay. So as far as like do's and don'ts, I'll go ahead and start off with a do. Um, Go ahead and make sure that you guys are sending authentic and personalized connection requests. This is a very important thing on LinkedIn. Um, This is not an opportunity to pitch, okay? (laughs) If you are hard pushing a product and a message before I know anything about you, this is automatically gonna get you taken off of my follower list or connection list, and everyone will agree with that. Um, This is a place to start building genuine relationships. So as far as dues, personalized connection requests, obviously we talked about the profile picture, you have to have that. But my biggest thing would just be have the confidence to put yourself out there and start to engage in conversations. Um, I talk about this a lot. It's very important for your organic growth on LinkedIn for you to, you. okay, let's imagine you're at a networking event, right? No one likes the guy that immediately comes up, just shoves business cards down your throat and runs away. That's not an appropriate way to go to a networking event. Same thing on LinkedIn. You don't immediately push your product in a message. But also at a networking event, you're there to network and have conversations with people. And whenever you see a piece of content that resonates with you, instead of just liking it, okay, make sure that you're leaving your two cents on that comment and start to become part of the conversation so you can grow and learn. And then that way you're also creating a relationship with the person that posted it. And so that way you're having more of a networking opportunity, right? And the last third thing that would kind of advise is to be, once again, brave enough to put yourself out there from your experiences and what you're learning. It goes back to the expert thing in the headlines. If you have two years experience, you're not an expert and it's okay. I'm not an expert at everything that I do. I'm great at it because this is what I love, but I'm no, by no means an expert. There are thousands of people that are better than me, but I'm learning from them. So whenever you see my content, I will talk about things that I've already learned. I'll talk about things that I'm learning and things that I want to accomplish. So be brave enough to put yourself out there by posting and creating content and just be authentic to who you are. Don't pretend to be someone. Don't fake it till you make it on this platform. It doesn't work. There's too many brilliant minds on this place. They'll sniff you out. Instead, my good friend of mine, Corey Warfield, says, face it till you make it. Show up every day. Be vulnerable. Be authentic. And I promise you that your network will start to grow and they will love you for it. And your life will change because LinkedIn changed my life. That is powerful. That was good. You win. Sorry, Matt Cachera. I'm calling you out, but he beat you. He got you on that (laughs) one. Matt is our resident. Uh, We talk about LinkedIn quite often for the military for transitioning. Uh, It's a hot platform. We encourage all veterans to use it. And uh, I I, I encourage everybody using it because I have people like, should I use Monster or Hot Jobs? I'm like, LinkedIn. Because, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I mean, but it's, yeah. it's good what you're teaching. I, I think like other things I always tell people is personalization of those of those messages, which I'll admit I've been stubborn about. I'm like, well, number one, I only connect with people I have drinks with or know or been to dinner with. Very snooty about that. But then as you grow it, you get to like 13,000, you got to start reaching out and building your platform. But I always tell people that's good right. if you're looking for a job, just like you customize 
don't be those lazy people who are applying for jobs because LinkedIn has this cool, like you can apply through LinkedIn and you don't have to put anything. Mm -hmm. Customize that. Say something. Don't just be like, they'll yeah. read it. They'll know. They don't, nobody reads that. Don't have the mentality people don't read it. They wouldn't put it in there if people didn't read it. Just say it. That's right, right. No, it's it, you have to be more strategic than that. I mean, ultimately, you just have to be you have to be way more strategic than that, and it shows whenever you effort. Now, adding people on your phone is a little difficult because it automatically sends a connection request before you have a message. So, if you don't have a computer, you have to do it on your phone. Send the connection request and send a follow up message. But uh, just so wanted to throw that. That's in there. sound advice right there. I like that because I always wonder, like, yeah. oh, when you do that, because you know, and, and you'd be good. I gotta tell you this while we're on air, so people know that how quality you are, just in case they don't believe. Like we. Don't, we always put quality people on our show, but yeah. you have been tagging me and stuff recently and I've had like five requests and they're all very customized. They come to me and they're like, we saw mm -hmm. Jeremy tagged you, wanted to follow you. Would you be interested in, in building your growth? And I know you gave me that tip and I'm starting to use it. And I haven't anybody like push back where in the past I've just sent a request to somebody I thought I wanted to connect with. And they're like, why are we connected? Where did we meet? I always love, I always kind of take that with attitude. Like, like sure. Did you meet me how at the Hyman Bar Mitzvah? Like, yeah. how dare you reach out to me? <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't say lion next to my name. Like, I'm not like snooty. Uh, but right. it is funny. It is a, it's a slippery slope when it comes to LinkedIn. People need to adopt to use it. I think they're afraid to use it, just like a lot of people are afraid to use YouTube. It takes a little bit of effort to use both platforms. People want simple, right? They want 240 characters, like you can with our friends over at Twitter, or something like Facebook, right. which you can basically do whatever you want and there's very few rules it's it's almost a nightmare over on that platform and i know that they tried to compete yeah. with linkedin and failed miserably uh, a few years ago which i'm still laughing about yeah, that they're, they're absolutely mastering the group space but I don't, other yeah. than like professional networking groups on linkedin other than those communities i stay off it awesome. you're 100 percent right it's, yeah. it's an absolute war zone nightmare over there i don't even understand what's going on no um but anyway, so, yeah. So we're gonna have to have you back I, uh, again to talk about LinkedIn in a few weeks because I want to dive into Facebook groups, uh, not Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, and mm. also talk about LinkedIn company pages. Uh, and, and that's just mm. because I'm selfish and want to know for my own. But I know a lot of people want to have those but don't. So I, I'd like to have you back if you wouldn't mind coming back in a few weeks so we can deep dive. You could be our resident LinkedIn expert around here for to the point. Cause we actually, I love it, man. I love it. Work. And there's a lot of good people I refer you to that would love to come on the show awesome. and talk about it. I'd love to be back. And yeah, I've got some really unique ways that uh, to drive some profile growth for um, LinkedIn pages that we'll talk about next time. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you, Jeremy, for joining us today. Give us these amazing tips and tricks. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to Jeremy. You can find it in the link below. Go ahead, click it, join on. Make sure if you do <clears throat> request him on LinkedIn. Hopefully you haven't been doing it during the show on our phone because that's just weird. But if you're following along, you see this, let him know. I'll give you a tip. If you add into the line, you actually watch this on To The Point, kudos. I bet you he accepts your request because you actually mentioned that you watched it on his show. That shows you've actually gone the extra mile and you're not one of these weirdos who's just like, I'm going to start following people with lots of followers. And don't say you don't do it because nice. we all know you do. Uh, so anyways, I want to yeah, thank you for Yeah, if I get us. that personalized message, I'll accept. Er, look Guaranteed. At that. I love it. So I want to thank you for joining us today, Jeremy. Thank you so much. We'll have you on soon. Uh, God bless and be safe. All right. Thanks, brother. Bye. Awesome. So everybody, that was Jeremy Leonard. Again, all those stats and everything will be down below in the YouTube link. So feel free to reach out and click those with any information. And those tips, go through and follow them. I'm telling you, LinkedIn is a very powerful weapon if you're trying to get through the nonsense that fills our social media. So we're going to have him back on a couple more times to go through our LinkedIn. If you have questions, maybe we'll plan a Q&A also one time so folks can give us some questions and answers. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll make sure Jeremy can respond to them if you put them in our YouTube channel. Feel free to ask your questions there and Jeremy will respond to you. And if you'd like to work with Jeremy and have Jeremy help you with your own platform, with your brand or yourself, make sure to click the link in the YouTube. Again, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in today and watching this segment. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and uh, we'll re be right back after these messages.